So what does a pipe clamp and a snowbank have to do with woodworking? Let's go into the shop and find out. Hi, I'm Rick Christofferson. Today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the differences between force and pressure and how that relates to woodworking when we're clamping up a glue joint. Now a clamp produces a force that we measure in pounds and our glue joint experiences a pressure that we measure in pounds per square inch. They're related but they're not exactly the same. Now it's not my intention to tell you how much pressure you should have on your glue joints because that's a decision you need to make on your own based on the type of glue that you're using, the glue manufacturer's recommendation, as well as a little bit of personal preference. What I do want to describe is how the decision of the pressure you would like to have on your joint translates into how much force we need to achieve from our clamps. Force is the compression our clamp jaws exert on the materials between the jaws and it is independent from the size of the material. We'll have the same force regardless whether it's a small piece or a large piece. Now a common force that we are all familiar with is weight and you can see how weight is independent from surface area by simply stepping on your bathroom scale. The force or weight will be the same regardless of whether you stand on the scale with one foot or with two, which is a change in the surface area. Pressure, on the other hand, is that force divided by the surface area it is acting upon. For the same force, or weight, the pressure will be lower when the force is spread out over a larger area. We can even see this with a simple experiment, such as how snowshoes allow us to walk on top of snow instead of sinking into it. The reason why we don't sink into the snow is because the large surface area of the snowshoe spreads the force out, giving us a lower pressure on the snow's surface. Let's try this out in the snow behind the workshop. Now to better understand the difference between force and pressure, let's take a look at a simple situation where we have a fixed force, such as a person's body weight, measured in pounds, is distributed out over different surface areas measured in square inches and how that impacts the pressure on the surface the person is standing. I have two boards here, one small and one large. This one is 620 square inches. This one is 220 square inches, approximately one third the size. I have some pristine snow freshly fallen out behind the workshop. I'm going to set the board on top of the snow and then stand on it. We'll see how far I sink into the snow depending on the size of the board. These boards are slippery and I've only got one take so if I fall you're going to see it. I've sunk in about two and a half inches on the larger board. We'll try the smaller board, which is really going to be tough. <clears throat> and I've sunk in about four inches. The difference being the surface area of the board that I'm standing on. There are a few interesting principles about force. Here I have several boards of different sizes between the jaws of the clamp. Each of these boards is experiencing the same force from the clamp. If the clamp is exerting a thousand pounds, for example, then each of these boards is experiencing a thousand pounds of force. However, the pressure between each of the boards is going to be different depending on the size of the surface areas between them. This first joint 
is one square inch. Therefore, it's going to have a thousand PSI across this joint from the thousand pound clamp. This joint is five square inches. And so it's going to experience, experience 200 PSI from the thousand pound clamp. And this last joint is 25 square inches. And so it will be experiencing 40 PSI from the thousand pound clamp. Now that we've learned about the difference between force and pressure, let's take a look at how this information applies to the glue joints we need to make in the workshop. So let's assume for simplicity that the glue manufacturer has stated 100 PSI is the optimal pressure for a proper glue joint. I have three different size joints here and we're going to examine how that 100 PSI in these joints translates into the force we need to apply to them. The smallest joint is 3 quarters of an inch by 15 and a half inches long which equals 11.5 square inches. This means we need 1,150 pounds of total force to achieve our 100 PSI across this joint. This joint is an inch and a half by 14 inches, which translates to 21 square inches. So we need 2,100 pounds of force to achieve our 100 PSI of pressure on the joint. Now these boards are six inches by six inches or 36 square inches. We need 3,600 pounds of force to achieve the 100 PSI of pressure across the whole surface. A pipe clamp, depending on how strong you are and how hard you turn the handle, can achieve anywhere from 1,000 pounds of total force to 1,800 pounds of total force. Now our smallest glue joint here with 11.5 inches, I'm going to have to use a single pipe clamp maxed out as high as it will go to achieve my 100 PSI across this whole joint. On our medium joint, I'm going to have to use two clamps maxed out to achieve the 2,100 pounds of total force necessary to achieve the 100 PSI on the joint. And on our largest joint here, with 36 square inches, needing 3,600 pounds of total force, I'm going to have to put a clamp on each side and nearly max out four pipe clamps in order to get enough clamping pressure to achieve the 100 PSI across this joint. What we've learned in this discussion is that a clamp produces an absolute force that is independent of the material between its jaws and the only time we consider the pressure is when we examine the material and its surface area that we're clamping between the jaws of the clamp. I'm Rick Christofferson. Thanks for watching. translates into how much force we need to achieve from our clamps. God. Thanks. You are so lucky. It's not my intention to tell you how much pressure you should have on your joint. That's a decision that you need to make. Depen God, that was the best take. Damn cat. Did you just get a mouse?